welcome back. In the last video, we got our project set up. And in this video, we are going to get our player moving and properly animated. So the first thing we can do is select our player object and come over here and let's change some of these values. I'm gonna drop the max speed down to 200. That way he won't be running around so fast. And one of the other things that was going on is the acceleration and deceleration were a little low, meaning that it took him a while to get up to full speed. And then once you stopped pressing a direction, it took him a while to come to a complete stop. So I'm gonna bump these up to twice as much as they are right now. That's gonna be 3000 for both of those. And then the jump strength, we don't want him to make it over that ledge and he was clearing it pretty easily before. So I'm gonna drop that down to 500. And then gravity, I'm gonna leave it 1500 and the max speed for now is going to stay at 1000. And then I am going to test that with our arrow keys. There we go. So a little bit better motion going on and it'll make much more sense when we get the animation set up. Okay, I'm gonna exit out of that. One thing I noticed that I should have set up in the last video, but I forgot all about it. If we click out in the layout area, and that actually brings up my background. So if you don't have your background locked, go ahead and lock that. And then now when we click on the layout, we get the layout properties. And I'm going to go down here to project properties click on view and scroll down all the way to the bottom. And we have some display options. These are set the way they are because we chose optimize for pixel art. And one of the things that we're running into is we're not taking up the full screen. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to show you real quick. If I click on the game layer and go to where we set it to transparent, I'm gonna untick that and that brings that light gray background back. If I play and we maximize our browser to full screen, we're only getting this small area. So I'm going to undo what I just did, make that transparent again, and then click on the layer, go to my project properties, and then down here where it says full screen mode, I have letterbox integer scale selected. I'm going to select letterbox scale and this is going to solve our problem. See, I have much more space to view and we're able to take advantage of the full screen size. And it makes it appear a little bit bigger that way too, while still keeping that pixel art crispness. Okay, sorry I didn't get that covered in the first video, but now we have that out of the way. Okay, let's go ahead and click on our player if you don't have it selected already. And over here in the platform behavior, we want to uncheck default controls. Now the arrow keys will no longer control our player. In fact, nothing will. So we're going to set up our own controls. Let's hop into the event sheet and I'm going to start creating some groups. This helps keep everything organized and actually gives you another layer of control over large blocks of code if you ever need it. But organization is key in my project. So I'm going to right click anywhere in a blank space and go down to add group. And I'm going to call this one initialize. And this just means everything that I want to happen as soon as the game loads, this is what I want. So I'm gonna drag this block of code that we already created into that group. So we have that now and we can actually close it up for now. And I'm going to right click and add another group. And I'm gonna call this one uh, movement. Okay, so we're going to give our player some custom controls and uh, we're going to use the keyboard to assign keys. So over here in our project panel, in our object types folder, right click on that and add new object type. Scroll down towards the bottom in the input category, we have keyboard. I'm gonna insert that. Now we can use the keyboard for anything we want in our project. So I'm gonna come over here to this little link that says add event to movement. And I'm gonna go grab that keyboard object and I'm going to check for key is down. And that means as long as this key is being held down and then we'll give it some code. 
So click to choose. I'm going to say A. And then I'm going to add an action to that. And I'm going to go into our player object. And we're going to scroll down to the platform behavior and simulate control. And the A is going to be my left control. So left. And I'm going to drag this out so we can see what's going on here. OK, I'm going to click in this blank space down here and make sure this whole block of code is highlighted and then press Control C on the keyboard and Control V to paste. And then I'm going to go into this event, double click to go into it and change this A to D. OK, and then we'll go into our simulate control pressing left. We want this one to be right. So now we have left and right. And now I'm going to add an event to movement, get our keyboard again, and this time I want on key pressed. And we're choosing that because this is going to be the W key, and that's going to simulate our jump. So let's add an action to it. Go get our player object, and scroll down to platform, simulate control, and that is going to be jump. Because we don't want to have to hold a button down to jump. We just want to press it. To move, we hold buttons down. We are actually done with this group. We can close that up. I am going to save the project, and then I'm going to play it and test it out. All right, there's my A and D and W. So we have our movement back using the typical movement controls that you use on a keyboard. Let's close out of that. I am going to right click and add another group. I'm going to call this one animation. Now we can set up our animation controls. So I'm going to add an event to animation and I'm going to go into our keyboard. And now I want to go to on key pressed and I want to check for the A and the D again. With this whole block of code selected, I'm going to control C to copy, control V to paste. We can go into this event, change that A to a D. All right, so when we hold down the A, we're moving as long as it's being held down. But once we press the A button, whether we're holding it down or not, I want our player to face that direction until we tell it to face the other direction. I'm going to add an action, go to our player, and when we imported the sprite, our player is facing to the right. So I'm going to search up here for mirror, set mirrored, and if we're moving to the left, we want our sprite to be flipped. So we're going to say mirrored. And then down here, when we're pressing D, we want to flip it back the other direction. So let's add an action, get our player, and actually I'm going to search for mirrored, and this time say not mirrored. These two tell the sprite which way to face. Let's play, and there we go. We are facing the correct direction with both directions. All right. I know this is pretty basic stuff to a lot of you, but I want uh, anybody to be able to come into this tutorial and follow along. So just a couple more checks here. Let's go ahead and add another event to animation. Go get our keyboard object. And this time we're going to check for key is down again. And we'll check for A. And this time I'm going to just highlight the event, not the whole block of code, but just this one check and control C to copy, control V to paste, go into the second one and change that A to a D. So this time I want to know if we're moving left or right, which is our A is down or our D is down. But right now this event says A and D. So both of them would have to be down at the same time for us to run an animation. But if we right click in this little empty space of the event, we can choose make or block. So now either the A or D is down, either one, then we can play our running animation. So let's add an action, go to our player, set animation, and in quotation marks, we want to type in uh, Annie underscore run. And once you start typing it in, it should come up. So in quotation marks is the name of the animation that we set up. All right, I am going to play that, and there we go. Now, obviously, 
we have an issue, and there is a good reason for that. Once we have pressed A or D, it starts playing the animation. Nowhere in our code have we told it to play a different animation. So it's going to stay on that run animation until we tell it differently. So I'm going to add another event, and this time I'm going to go get our player and scroll down to the platform behavior. And we have one called is moving, and this says it's true when the object is moving. Well, I want to know if it's not moving. So if we select just the event and hit I on the keyboard, it will place this X next to it. That means we have inverted it. So now it says if the platform is not moving, then we can add an action, go get our player, set animation, and in quotation marks, let's get animation idle. Okay, we can play that. Now, when we go left, it stops the run animation, and it'll still play it when we jump because we haven't told it uh, to play a different animation. But this part is working good. Let's add one more event to animation, get our player, and scroll down to the platform behavior. And this time, we're going to use this is on floor, which is true when object is on top of a solid or platform. Exactly what we need. But I want to know if it is not on the floor. So I on the keyboard will invert that. If our player is not on the floor, what animation do you think it should be playing? If you guessed the jump animation, you are correct. So let's add an action, get our player, set the animation to any jump. Play that. And now we have a jump animation and it's idle when nothing is moving and on the floor. Everything looks like it's working pretty good. Okay, this one was pretty easy and pretty quick. So let's go ahead and make sure that you're saving at least as often as I tell you to, hopefully even more often. But that is going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.